Hello, Fjorim here. I have done plenty of large builds lately and I thought I would gather what I've learned about belt and pipe management into a hopefully useful list of 10 tips. So here we go. Number 1. Foundations. Always build on foundations, at least when building factories. Without foundations it's almost impossible to build neat and organized conveyor belts. Obviously you don't have to build foundations all the way to your miners, the belts that run from those can be a bit messy. All the remaining tips, well, at least almost all of them, also assume you are using foundations, including number 2. Straight lines. This is something that is heavily supported by the foundations. Try to build straight lines as they easily look organized. Angled belts and pipes are much harder to make clean looking, although it is possible. The maximum length for a single belt or pipe is 7 foundations or 56 meters. It is important when talking about the next tip, namely Number 3. Adjacent belts and pipes. It's a good idea to stop adjacent belts and pipes so that the conveyor poles and pipeline supports are aligned. If you have belts or pipes of different length leading to the same spot, choose this common alignment spot based on the longest belt or pipe, making sure it doesn't become longer than 7 foundations. Aligning the conveyor poles and pipeline supports is especially important when stacking belts or pipes, which brings us to the next point. Number 4. Stacks. If there's more than one belt or pipe that you need, you have to decide whether to have them adjacent to each other or as a stack, or a combination of the two. This often depends on the space you have available as well. If you choose to stack them, the stackable conveyor poles and pipelines are perfect for the job. For a stack, you will first build a regular conveyor pole or pipeline support, and then add stackable versions on top of it. They have been designed so that the next belt or pipe will be 2 meters higher than the previous one. If you have several adjacent and stacked belts or pipes, it usually looks much better if the poles are aligned, as mentioned in the previous tip. Although there are also reasons not to align them, and here's one of them. Number 5. 90 degree turns. If you need to make a turn on a belt or a pipe, a 90 degree turn usually looks the best. When building on a foundation, you get a perfect 90 degree turn when you place the next conveyor pole or pipeline support two clicks away from the center point on either side. This also means that if you are about to do a 90 degree turn on a bunch of adjacent belts or pipes, you should make each one 2 clicks or 2 meters shorter than the previous one. That means that after you make the 90 degree turn, the belts or pipes will still be perfectly adjacent. Number 6. Going through walls. If you need to go through walls, there are special conveyor walls that you can buy from the awesome shop. They have either 1, 2 or 3 conveyor holes. If you plan to use this, it might be a good idea to prepare the belts so that they have the proper interval, depending on how many belts you want to pass through the wall. Especially if you have more than 3 adjacent belts, let's say 4, you will need to space out either one to a completely new conveyor wall, or all of them slightly to use two of the walls with two holes each. You should also know that if you have a stack of belts, every second belt on the stack will not align to the wall with the conveyor hole, so you will need to adjust the stack accordingly. For pipes to pass through walls, you will need pipeline wall holes. These are also bought from the awesome shop. They can be placed on any wall, including the ones with the conveyor holes, and can also clip between two walls. They are also conveniently 2 meters in diameter. This means you can always match your adjacent or stacked pipes perfectly with the wall holes. Number 7. Going through floors. When you need to pass belts or pipes to another level of your factory, you might need to go through floors. The awesome shop contains floor holes for both belts and pipes. The conveyor lift floor holes allow conveyor lifts to go through floors. This means that you first need to get the belts to lifts. Luckily everything belt and pipe related in this game seems to go in increments of 2 meters, so this is also pretty easy. Normally you need to place the conveyor hole first, then attach lift to it, note that you can toggle the direction with R key if it's not correct by default, and finally you attach the belt to the lift. Each new level on the conveyor pole stack means two clicks on the conveyor lift which goes in 1 meter increments. If you have a stack of conveyor belts going up, you should first handle the topmost belts and then proceed downwards. When going down, the order is obviously opposite. On the next level, if you want to get back the same arrangement of the belts, you just do the opposite of what you did on the previous level. Pipes do not have lifts, so bringing them to another level is somewhat easier. 
You do need to take into account a few things though. First, if you ascend about the pipe's current head lift, you will need to add pumps to the pipes. Secondly, to get a pipe going from a support to the floor hole immediately next to it, try using the noodle build mode. Again, you use R to toggle between the build modes. This usually does the trick. Thirdly, to get a stack of pipes to floor holes, I usually like to use the horizontal to vertical build mode, which does a nice 90 degree turn on the pipes, aligning the different levels of the stack nicely. Note that the hole you click first defines which pipe section will be built horizontally or vertically. In here you can see that the pipe doesn't look nice if the hole on the wall is clicked first, but looks better when the hole on the floor is clicked first instead. Finally, pipeline floor holes are unfortunately somewhat buggy at the moment, and sometimes no fluid is flowing through them. I've noticed this happens for instance when placing a pump to a pipe that goes through a floor hole above the pump. This usually stops the floor hole from working, but can be fixed by rebuilding the pipe after the pump. Number 8. Plan ahead. When you are doing big builds, it's a good idea to plan your logistics before you start building. Try to minimize crisscrossing pipes and belts, and instead plan a flow that starts with the basic components that you produce from input materials, then moves to recipes needing those components, etc. For a complex factory, this isn't always easy, as the same materials might be needed for various different recipes. Planning a logical material flow allows reducing the spaghetti that you build drastically. It's also a very good idea to make rules, for instance that incoming flows go on the left and outgoing flows go on the right. This minimizes the need for belts or pipes to pass through each other. Also, be consistent with your builds. For instance, choose one way to handle manifold structures for machines with several inputs and stick with it. This way all the builds have the same organized look and feel. Number 9. Hide your spaghetti. Some spaghetti is almost always inevitable. If you want to keep the factory floor clean, it's a good idea to build a service level below it to hide most of the belts and pipes. This is something I do with almost all of my builds these days. The drawback is that for a large factory it takes a long time to build each floor, and twice as long if you also need to build another floor for the service level. Routing the belts and pipes to the service level also takes significantly longer than building the connections directly on the factory floor. When planning the service level, you need to decide how tall it should be. I advise having a height of at least two walls. One wall can host just two stacked belts or pipes, which is rarely enough, especially as you still want to be able to move through this floor as well. You can add an even higher service level, just remember that it adds to the total height of the building. Number 10. Gather the belts for resource nodes. And finally, we can do some organization also for the belts leading from the resource nodes. I tend to stack these belts if there are more than one coming from the same general direction. If you want, you can obviously build proper stackable conveyor poles, but I usually can't be bothered. Instead, I just build new belts on top of existing ones, effectively placing the conveyor poles on the belts themselves. This works fine, and when looked at from a distance it doesn't look too bad. It's also actually more compact than piling a tall stack of stackable poles. And that's my 10 tips for neat conveyor belts and pipes. Let me know in the comments what your favorite is, and also if I forgot something. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel, it really helps. Thanks for watching, and see you soon!